lane till I get there like the Maytag. I'm on the way back. Low lane till I get there like the Maytag. Put the noise on the back burner on the front. More fugal noise gonna show you what's up. Put the noise on the back burner on the front. More fugal noise gonna show you what's up. I'm on the way back. Low lane till I get there like the Maytag. An explosion at nuclear air base just 150 miles from Moscow opens stunning new phase of war. Two explosions at a major Russian military base, including the Delevelovo uh, base near Ryazan, just 150 miles from Moscow, means that the war in UKR has come right to Vladimir Putin's do- uh, doorstep. It says the explosions, which may have been missiles or drone strikes, but that has yet to be confirmed, suggest that whoever is behind them wanted to strike fear right into the heart of Russia. So there are some pretty big things going on here as far as uh, breaking news. So we're going to talk about all of that and more. We're going to hit uh, the two substations that were hit uh, over the weekend. Huge, huge ordeal there. We'll talk about all of that and give you an update. And then, of course, everything we know from the current events that have happened in the last 48 hours, it's all going to be on tonight's show. So stick around. We'll be right back with the rest of the news and the rest of this article right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, Can't say thank you enough. I'm on the way back. Lonely till I get there like the Maytag. I'm on the way back. Lonely till I get there like the Maytag. Put the noise on the back burner on the front. More fugal noise gonna show you what's up. Put the noise on the back burner on the front. More fugal noise gonna show you what's up. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam, A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Tonight, we have a lot to go over, so if you've never been here before, remember, you can always go over to marfugalnews.com and find every single article, tweet, video, picture, document we're going to show you here today. We have a full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture right there at your fingertips so you know exactly where it came from. Again, we always source our work, so that way you know uh, what independent or mainstream article we got it from. That way you have that information. Uh, When you go over to the website, You'll see it's very easy to navigate. Uh, it is done by thumbnail. This uh, one of today, uh, today's, it's a weird world, is Elon telling us it's getting close. I just want to point out uh, before we start, uh, this is something he posted on a tweet. We'll show that uh, later. But uh, how many times have I said, like, you know, I've talked about this just recently, and I know other people have said that he's like trying to be a Noah's, uh, a Noah's Ark or type of thing, taking people to Mars. But uh, later we'll dig deep into uh, the creepy things inside this 1968 painting that he just tweeted, among other things that have weird connections. So we'll go over all of that later. But once you click on that, uh, once you get there, you will be brought to all of the articles, tweets, video, pictures, documents. And then it is a live show. And if any of you have breaking news that we don't have because we're doing the show, you can actually add that in. And we will, of course, add that to the website as we go. So again, Again, it's a really, really awesome uh, tool to use. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? 
Hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I am doing just fine. So another great place to stop by while you're at the website is marfuglenews.com slash friends. Tonight, down in the chat, uh, there are a few thousand people there, and it's usually pretty uh, pretty awesome down there. So if you do want to go down there, make sure to say hi to our mods. Our mods are amazing people. Uh, make sure to go check out their channels as well. They're all creators, authors, amazing artists. Uh, Bones, CJ Blaze, Gem Gem, Jammer One, Lisa R. Hall... Uh, again, PNW Affliction, Rip Curl Readiness, RGL Harris, uh, I, Leah, and Trinity, Red or Blue Pill, Hi Ho, Kermit the Frog here. And then, of course, our good friend, Wages World, uh, again, a great creator as well. He is also down there uh, listed over on Creators and Friends of Marv. All right. Uh, to get so so Dex, actually, I want to bring you in on this. So this explosion near or, or at the nuclear air base just 150 miles from Moscow uh this could be something or what do you think well it's certainly uh reaching pretty far into the country we've seen a few strikes in the past during this conflict that made it across the border and hit bases or and they were typically localized closer to the border type bases but uh or um caches and stores of uh, munitions and other things like that but in this case uh they're going pretty deep so um, this is kind of interesting to see how bold uh, UKR is getting. Yeah, not um, not something that uh, a lot of a lot of folks want to see is an escalation in the conflict here. Uh, many people believe you know it's, the whole thing is a circus. Uh, that circus could turn into real life real quick. Uh, with everything else that is going on right now over the weekend, if you did not watch the video I put out on uh, the sister channel or the short that I put out here. Um, that was actually uh, it was actually pretty uh, a huge story that you know kind of went under the radar for quite a few hours. I actually caught it late. I actually saw it on uh, Canadian Prepper. Uh, I ended up watching his video, and he was the one who alerted to me about it. And I do check the news a lot. Um, on the weekends, I try to take some breaks. But again, uh, Canadian Prepper put up a video, and I, I could not believe that I missed it, almost by 24 hours. And those two substations hit I explained were extremely, extremely uh, odd uh, events because they were done on purpose. They were done with a rifle or some other uh, bullet you know, shooting uh, weapon. And essentially it took out power for 45,000 people. They put a curfew in place. They put a lot of things. And there are questions and speculation running around that this may be uh, a country like Vlad's or a country like NK's or a country, somebody else that was, you know, putting this into place. The feds are now investigating that. So we'll talk about that later as well. Really, really, really weird stuff going on. Uh, again, those two substations, uh, we don't know if those are important substations, but we do know from previous information that only 9 out of 55,000, if they pick the right ones, which again, they they hacked the um, uh, solar, during the solar winds hack, they actually hacked into Black Start, which was the operation that uh, essentially the contingent plan, if our whole grid was to go down, that would be the plan that we, uh, you know, use to rebuild over 18 to 24 months. Well, think about this. It's already 18 months, you know, on the low end of the estimate to rebuild our grid if it went down. So that means 18 months without power. Many people would perish, all sorts of bad things. Imagine if they had also the contingency plan and were able to knock out anything that was possibly uh, prepared or stored or uh, done to actually uh, rebuild. That would be very bad, and that's exactly what was accessed during Solar Winds, which affected all five military branches. It was the largest hack in history, I believe, or at least the most uh, far-reaching. It, it hit like you know all of the top 500 companies everywhere. Um, so that that happened. Lots of things to talk about. And then FBI called to investigate firearms attacks on Duke Energy substations in North Carolina, 40,000 without power. Now, Dex, when they put the curfew on, I, of course, have done two videos on this. The first was like when I first found out when I first saw that Canadian Prepper video, I was just I was absolutely like blown away. I was like, holy moly, because we've talked about this for so long. We have been watching for anything to happen towards the substations and uh, electric grid. Uh, we specifically, I don't know if you guys remember this, five days before that, there was a DHS threat that we covered and said that there was a potential f uh, Fantastic Freddy that could happen on that on that in the next week. And then all of a sudden this happens. Uh, Dex, and that was guided towards uh, a certain group of people. 
And that's why when this happened, everybody immediately said, oh, it was to protest this or protest that. I don't think that was what it was. So, something is up here. Uh, Dex, you, you did say that you uh, you, you got a, a Fugal fam that had a different perspective on it. Do you want to share that? Yeah, they, they mentioned the, lo the location of Fort, I think it was Fort Bragg uh, that was nearby and that they thought that this was potentially training or practice uh, for something. And it was convenient that there was this other event going on that would likely be the cover uh, or be the excuse. At least that was their theory. Um, so having, you know, said that, you know, this notion that um, this could be a a practice run or um, an experimentational run of uh, of types of activities that could be done is kind of interesting. The other thing, and we'll talk about it in this article, is this actually happens more frequently than we think. It's just that it typically happens in places that doesn't actually cause an outage. Yep. And a lot of these attacks do not result in actual outages. So that begs the question, did they know that this would actually knock out the power? There were 17 attacks in California to the PG&E stations. Uh, those, I don't believe, even did as much damage as this. So one thing, I had a conversation with a, a gentleman in the Fugle fam, and uh, we we actually had quite a, a kind of a debate back and forth, and it was kind of an aha moment. He pointed out that I was a little bit too extreme on it, and... I got defensive and actually we ended up, you know, hashing it out. And now we're, I guess, you know, online friends, right? Uh, it was, uh, he kept polite the whole time. He kept, uh, he was very respectful, even of other Fugle fam that came to my defense. He was then respectful to them. Uh, then once I saw him being respectful to the people that are trying, you know, to defend me and, and be defensive, that's when I said, you know, this guy's cool. So anyways, um, uh, I might as well say hi to Mark because nobody's going to hate you for being respectful and awesome. Um, and then as far as the discussion we had is that, you know, is are these important substations or are they uh, the most important? So it is a grid. So they're all connected, uh, but there are different sections. This is on the eastern uh, interconnection grid, basically the eastern side. So this could have something to do with if this got knocked out and a few others, it could knock out the entire east coast in theory. Uh, not only that, uh, if that was to not get knocked down, they can grab power from the east coast or from other places. It is a grid, which means it's all you know interconnected. Texas is the only state that actually has its own grid. So as far as the all the rest of the United States, it is literally all connected. Uh, um, as far as it only takes nine out of 55,000 substations to knock out our entire grid. And this isn't me saying that. That is the FERC, the Federal uh, Energy, the FERC, Federal Energy Regulation Committee or Commission. And they went in and they found all of the weak spots. Now, the public does not know the weak spots. In fact, the public wasn't even supposed to know about the FERC report, but it leaked. And what it leaked is that we are horribly, horribly vulnerable. And in that same one that went to lawmakers, they said, we need some sort of backups. This is why my theory is that Elon and the reason why last year we covered that the they started seeing Tesla hats at grid, uh, grid locations and substations and uh, huge, huge buildings that looked like basically backup batteries, is they asked for some sort of um, uh, transportational, or um, sorry, uh, they asked for some sort of portable or backup, uh, you know, device or substation that could be put in in its place. The thing is, is when these substations get hit, and if they're physically damaged, they can take upwards of, you know, months to actually get replaced. In this case, they were able to fix it in just about five days. Uh, and, and that's still, again, it's still out. Uh, but this is, you know, if, the, if they hit the right nine, it could literally knock us out and knock us out for 18 months. 18 months to 24 months to get these things replaced. Because it is big gear. It's hard to make. It's not made here. And it's a, it's a huge ordeal. And that's why they say if, if we did have our entire grid down, 90% of us would perish because it would, uh, all of the stuff, the, the critical infrastructure would go down as well. Water, everything. 
So uh, the argument was, what well, were these important or were they not? We don't know. But what we do know is out of 55,000 substations, about 100 of them, the FERC says that they absolutely need to be protected against physical attack. And out of those 100, there's about 30 that any 30 of in that 30, you could hit nine of any of those 30 and do not only serious damage, uh, nightmarish damage that could be, you know, the end of the USA as we know it. That's what's crazy about this is a is a the right coordinated uh, event could literally put us into the dark ages here in the USA. That's what's nuts. And if you're somewhere else, if you're in Europe or Australia or anywhere else, I'm sure there's uh, things that they could do to yours as well. Our grid is old school, just like everybody else's. The grid, the you know, grid technology has not advanced uh, too crazy like. And again, you know, maybe that will change, but as of right now, it is definitely uh, old and outdated. Uh, Dex, when when you heard about this first, what did you think about this? Did you think that that something was going on, or something was fishy, or what was your opinion on oh, this? For sure, I thought something was fishy immediately, um, and my first thought went to. Uh, you know, all of the warnings we've had from uh, DHS and others that, you know, this was potentially something along those lines or maybe something orchestrated to uh, then be pointed at uh, something along those lines. That was my first inclination. Yeah, and that warning was just on Thursday night's show, uh, Thursday or Wednesday. Uh, we didn't do a show on Friday. I ended up, we got snowed out, we lost power, and it was a big reminder to us again um, in the last couple months, I've actually lost power th three times, uh, two of two of which uh, were pretty short. But the the last one or the first one was the worst. That one was like a day and a half, two days, and that's not much considering you know in California they were having forced eight day uh, you know powered uh, forced blackouts. But it definitely makes you think and it makes you, you know, realize how much we take power for granted when you do lose power for any extended amount of time. I'm sure most of you have uh, had some sort of, you know, power outage or event happen to you. Uh, speaking of the Fugle fam, Badger1, Michelle K, thank you so much. Badger and, uh, of course, Scooby-Doo Do Right, thank you guys for going back uh, back and forth uh, with uh, T-Man Red Pill. We've got Skyhouse, Renegade PD, Kimbria, Beer Juice, Vicky K., Thank you for your nightly stop by. And thank you for everybody that has already popped into chat. Uh, we'll be actually heading over to you guys here in just a second as well. Thank you, Bandy Bear, and everybody else that ended up uh, leaving us on the last show. Uh, Vibron, Stephen McMahon, Kingdoms of Urban, Mark Wall, Be Real Beast, and uh, a few others actually stopped by and didn't say anything, but thank you for the super stickers. Uh, I think that was Darren and... Uh, Dillinger, thank you so much. Uh, Stephen McMahon tonight, thank you for your support. I appreciate that. And it looks like Connie, Connie Lee, thank you for the massive support. Thank you for supporting Independent. Uh, let's see here. Connie Lee just did a $50 super chat. Thank you so much. You know that's not necessary. I appreciate it. Um, and didn't say a word. Connie Lee, always leave a message if you can. That way I can, of course, shout somebody out or get to know you. Again, that I think the more you do, the more they let you write. So you can write a letter if you want. All right. And then thank you again for your support. Uh, let's see here. And then with these two substations, there's way more details on that other video that I did. Make sure to go to marfuglenews.com. Uh, when you go to marfuglenews.com, you'll see at the very top, there is news, TV, and friends, when you go to news, you'll see 9 out of 55,000 to take it all down. That video was the calmer of the two. This first one was literally, you know, minutes after I watched uh, the Canadian Prepper video, and I was just blown away. Uh, so that one, make sure to go check out that last one over on Marfugal News. Make sure to share it out. I think that that one communicated clearly uh, why it is important and why it is pretty freaky, uh, of, of course, what is ha what happened. And then the future of Randy Morality Police, unclear after officials remark. Now, most people, every time we cover something like this, I, I get comments and, and emails saying, oh, I don't care about all this. Why don't you cover less stuff from the Middle East? The Middle East is a flashpoint. It's a hot point. Uh, it is something, it's a place where, obviously, in the Middle East, we could have a WW3 scenario kick off, and it could be over something civil, 
uh, like what is going on over there right now, the protests and all the fights and arguments, uh, this can escalate very quickly into other things uh, between between some of these countries. Uh, Dex, when you saw this, uh, what did you think about, you know, I don't think the morality police are going anywhere, but that's just my opinion. What do you think? Well, yeah, the early reports were that they were being they they were going away. And then these new reports are coming out saying not really. And so at one on one hand, they thought that all the protesting had worked and had potentially resolved issues. But then apparently it, it appears like it didn't. It's sort of like uh, they, they started to say it was going to and then they came back and said that didn't. That's not exactly what they meant. So, you know, why this matters? I think the one thing I would ask is, you know, our country um, and our allies uh, the intelligence organizations and some other very powerful people have spent a great deal of time in the past um, helping overthrow uh, regimes and overthrow rulers and displace dictators and things like that. So, um, and they've usually done it through um, orchestrated protests and and grabbing into um, and helping fuel. Um, events like this. So it just makes me wonder if how much of this is organic. And even if it is organic, that's one thing. Uh, but if it's if it's not, or if it's uh, orchestrated or helped by an outside force, um, that wouldn't be outside of the realm of what we've seen from numerous countries over the years, over the history. And then I think about how important this specific country is and the um, stability of peace, so to speak, in the ME, as it relates to nuclear proliferation, as it relates to relationships with IS and its other adversaries there, which have been very uh, estranged, if not on the brink of conflict. So it would make a lot of sense in my mind if somebody wanted to do a regime change or make some massive turmoil in that country, this would be one that would highly be targeted. So when we see these types of things happen, it's important because you should think who's really behind it or who may be really encouraging or helping it grow. Which, you know, we don't know exactly who is who is behind all of these things in other countries. We know, you know, we have guesses where, you know, where we live. If you live there and you have some guesses, let us know. And then Dissident says Cuba regime has unleashed repressive fury. Sanchez, who lives in, lives in Havana, said a flare-up of street protests in 2021 jolted Cuba's ruling party and led to strict controls. Uh, repressive fury was unleashed. Uh, we have more than 1,000 political prisoners, Sanchez said during a panel at the International Book Fair of Guadalajara, a major annual trade and ideas forum. It says Sanchez said she worried about the impact of new penal code approved by Cuba's uh, Cuba's parliament uh, last May that went into effect last week. The most harmed, the main victim of this code is independent journalism, information and the free flow of news. The penal code classifies as crimes uh, a number of activities the state considers subversive or harmful to society. Human rights groups say it will serve to stifle dissent. The code maintains the death penalty for 23 types of crime, including harming state security, terrorism, international drug trafficking, and murder. Other activities also deemed subversive carry lesser sentences. Popular protest is criminalized under offenses such as public scandal, said Sanchez, founder of the website 14yomedia.com and winner of Spain's Ortiga y Gasset Journalism Prize in 2008. How the Cuban Communist Party plans to enact the code is not clear, she said. Questions arise, are they going to apply uh, it strictly or is it just to intimidate? Because there were already legal tools to intimidate us. So one thing to point out is Canada, or no, Canada, <laughs> almost the same thing uh, in some people's opinion. Cuba has been working with Vlad and uh, Cuba's leaders have met with several of our enemies and se several things were going on. We covered how there were satellite images of several uh, weird locations with satellite dishes and things that they thought may be spying on the U.S., 
Uh, I just wonder if the U.S. or any of these other countries have something to do with what is actually happening with the protests. Obviously, CIA, KGB, and all of these other agencies, they directly get themselves involved in smaller countries. Uh, and, uh, of course, they you know do regime changes all the time. If you know, you know. Uh, so I just wonder what's really happening here. And it's, uh, it's you know, right off, uh, right off of Florida, we've got this, uh, this Cuba, of course, going all the way back to the Cuba, uh, Cuba Missile Crisis. It's something that, uh, it's something that we always try to update and follow on, and we'll see what happens with Cuba. There are questions about if Cuba is going to, you know, play a part in the next world conflict. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And then, Dex, do you have anything to say about Cuba as far as what happened? I thought it was interesting the number of uh, political prisoners is equal to the number of people that were um, arrested here and still held uh, for the event back in January a year and a half ago or a year ago. Which is kind of crazy that there are people that, I, in fact, um, I, I believe, and you guys on DLive can correct me, aren't there a couple DLive streamers that are still in jail for that, for streaming that day? I am uh, just wonder. I, I know there were several. There were like at least eight streams, which that day I actually watched it live uh, from the POV of people actually walking in. So um, when I see what's put in history books, it's a whole lot different than what I remember. But that doesn't happen often. I mean, <laughs> that almost never happens where, you know, the event is different in the media and history books than it is in real life, right? And moving on. Let's see here. Uh, before we move on, I do want to remind you, if you haven't already, make sure to go over and check out morefugalnews.com slash prep. If you haven't had any uh, chance to get yourself some long-term survival food, the difference between this and getting yourself some canned food, this is uh, freeze-dried foods and different foods that are uh, packaged in Mylar bags that will last 25 years, over two decades. So essentially, this food will be good until 2047, almost halfway through the century. That means you can uh, essentially get this, put it away somewhere, keep it to when you need it, or end up using it in a couple years or for a storm or for a local event. It doesn't have to be for the end of the world to, to stock up on food. The great part about this is if you do have a kind of a timeline you want uh, in mind, if you say, I want three months of food you can get that. If you say, I want a month of extra food, you can get that. And it's just checked off the list. Now, the one really, really great part about this is it's uh, one of the most affordable. There's a lot of competitors in that whole field. What I really like about My Patriot Supply is the affordability. And right now it is the largest discount they've ever done. They did not raise their price through CV, even though the demand shot up uh, higher than it's ever have before. After the shelves were cleared off in the beginning of CV, all sorts of companies were raising their prices, doubling, tripling. Uh, they actually kept it through almost all of CV. And now they are actually giving a discount of $250. So it's an affordable way to get yourself uh, a really great set of food that you can actually use. Uh, there are all sorts of awesome companies out there. The reason I like them is, again, you can get three months uh, for, I want to say now, $250 off, uh, like under 700 what is it now it is 597 is that is that right that is right hey adam yeah they they actually just changed it it's 200 off but look at the four week for those of you that are looking for a four week that's the biggest sale they've ever had 70 bucks off on that so if you're trying to get the smaller amount uh, that's that's a great deal well, at the they, moment. It looks like they actually lowered their original price because it was like around nine hundred. Now it's seven ninety seven. That's true. Yeah, they lowered it. So now yeah. it's and then it was seven ninety seven. It's five ninety seven. And then this is two seventy seven with seventy dollars off or fifty dollars off. No, that yeah, it says save fifty, but it's it's oh because with the code. So yeah, at two hundred seven, that's a month of food for two hundred dollars. If you divide that into thirty. That's a pretty awesome deal as far as being able to eat food for 30 days for $207. It's not bad. And as far as if you, you save more when you actually get more, $597 for three months, uh, that is what most people spend on one month of food. 
uh, again, and it's and it's going to last 25 years and it's going to stay good. So, all right, and then make sure to go check that out. That is a huge, huge deal. When you look at, at some of the competitors, some of them are as high as $2,000. There's different reasons why about that, and we'll talk about that in future shows. Uh, I definitely, I've been looking a lot into all different kinds. You can get six or seven different kinds of it, and really it's a lot of people are actually investing in all sorts of different uh, freeze-dried foods because the value of them have gone up. Uh, North Korea reportedly fires 130 artillery rounds violating inter-Korean agreement. So, so it's kind of like deja vu, but this is a new story. This isn't this isn't a repeat. Uh, somebody will be like, wait, I thought that was last week. Um, Dex, this just happened again, and it's again with the artillery shells, and some of these got pretty close. Well, yeah, and not only that, they're violating an agreement. Um, so there's a 2018 uh, agreement that they have uh, in which they're not supposed to do this. It's intended to stop this type of activity. So the fact that they're breaking that uh, is kind of significant. And and so it's one thing to do tests. It's one thing to do drills. It's one thing to show your might or stomp your, you know, your pound your chest and stomp your feet. All that stuff is one scenario. But when you start breaking treaties and breaking, um, you know, agreements that you have with other countries, uh, that takes it to a different level. Uh, it's not, we're not talking conflict level, but we're definitely, you know, showing signs that, hey, um, the things we've said we would do together to try to maintain some sense of stability are out the window now. And so anytime that these types of uh, steps are taken and the escalation is taken to a new level, it's concerning because obviously these are the precursors uh, to getting to that conflict uh, point, that breaking point where it actually does turn into, you know, live fire across the borders and it escalates into all out combat. And with the Korea's um, uh, most of you and uh, myself, I believe that they are a puppet of some somebody else, whether it be the U.S., Vlad or China. I don't know. Uh, but they there's so much, you know, weird events that go on there. Uh, in fact, just in this article, there was kind of a teaser for a different article, which we actually talked about this a week ago about uh, Kim Jong Un showing off his daughter. And we, we made fun of the, the basically those photos of him walking on the beach like an inspiration poster in front of a, a Sarmat 2 looking missile, like a, you know, huge, huge intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, like, like, you know, just, oh, let's teach you about the birds and the bees and the nukes. Uh, but now they're, of course, saying what we were saying last week with uh, some of the independent media that reported on all of this. Uh, you, you know, we were covering independent media at that time. Now mainstream is also saying it looks like they're, you know, sparking succession, uh, secession rumors that she'll be the one who takes over, which is very strange. It's almost like they introduced the sister to get their country uh, potentially, you know, ripened for a woman leader. I don't know. Something odd is going on. That's totally against their culture. Uh, if you look at how women are treated in that country i guess you would have to be a god to be treated differently or i guess like a normal woman here right it says in the middle of november the hermit kingdom fired a ballistic missile that splashed down in waters due east of korean peninsula south korea is no stranger to this sort of behavior from hostile actors even more recent south korea was forced to scramble jets without warning after multiple chinese warplanes and six russian uh, warplanes were found entering its air defense identification zone and that's actually one of the uh, other things that popped out is, <clears throat> uh, of course, all of these jets flying in in South Korea actually scrambling. We covered those scramble, uh, the, the jets scramble stories all over the world. Japan's had to scramble to chase off of uh, chase off uh, Russian and Chinese jets together. They're flying together. And now South Korea. Um, and I believe even... Australia had a little run in. So there's all sorts of odd things happening. And then Space Race 2.0. China is building weapons to attack U.S. ground, sea, and air targets from orbit. Huh. It's not like our community said that like five years ago. 
Uh, China's military is rapidly building a large force of space weapons, including sophisticated anti-satellite missiles, lasers, jammers, orbital killer robots, and cyber tools designed to blind and deafen the American military in a future war, the U.S. military is warning. New details details of uh, Beijing's growing space arms arsenal were revealed that the Pentagon's latest annual report to Congress on the Chinese military released publicly on Tuesday. The People's Liberation Army continues to acquire and develop a range of counter space capabilities and related technologies, including kinetic kill missiles, ground-based lasers, and orbiting space robots, as well as expanding space surveillance capabilities, which can monitor objects in space within their field of view and enable counter space actions uh, via the 195-page report. It said that the report said Chinese space forces and related support elements continue to mature rapidly. I've pointed this out for a long time. For a long time, I was, I was, I was actually pretty uh, afraid of being called a fear monger and, and you know, saying what I feel, which is World War Three is coming. Uh, now I feel like it's pretty hard to argue it, and I feel like the writing is all over the wall and on people's faces at this point. Um, but especially after talking to several Fugel fam that are currently in the military and retired military as well, they all say the same thing, but it's more of, you know, speculation on their end, or unless they know somebody who is still in, they might know a little bit more or depending on what their rank was. But with, when you talk to active military and it depends, there's a few that are in pretty high up, uh, spots that watch the show. They are saying that they are expecting something to pop off in the next two years. Uh, that was something that I heard even from public interviews with people that were uh, guarding uh, the bases in Mo Clips. That's exactly what the gentleman who was guarding that place said. And that was way before all of this stuff came out in the beginning of CV. Said about four or five years, we'll be in the thick of it. Now, fast forward, it's kind of crazy because things are moving very fast. China of course, which said that they were building 300 nukes. Now, all of a sudden, they're saying they're going to have 1,500. China, which said, oh, well, we'll have our own space station, not only launched the first, the second, and the third, all three of the, the, the missiles or rockets that launched all three parts of their new space station, all three got launched in like a year and a half time. And the third and final piece is already up there. And they have said that that space station is being is going to be used for the defense of China. It's a military application. It's something uh, for their military. That was launched up there. And then they have been testing all sorts of different uh, space-based weapons. This is no surprise since Space Force generals have been saying, not, all in, not only in private, but in public, at least three officials from the Space Force ended up saying that uh, not only have they weaponized space, the DOD, in fact, the Pentagon and the DOD came out and did a public speech for the first time, not only admitting that direct energy weapons were real and not a conspiracy, but they said that China and Vlad have both weaponized space with them. Uh, three generals or three high up officials, some of the highest from Space Force said that we are already at war in space. So it's kind of hard to deny that we're about to be in some sort of tiff with China and, and Vlad when you put all of the other little things like uh, China, the Pentagon, and Russia all agree that the only way that China would win a war, which China, by nature and by their culture, by their heavenly mandate, they do not want to be number two or three forever, that they have to be number one. And if you look at what they've done, they have taken over world trade. They now do more world trade with any country uh, than any country, including the U.S. now. They have the largest navy. Uh, now they are building and catching up at such a rapid pace with nukes. They are building the largest air, face, air force in the world. They have the largest manned force. And, of course, they are one, one thing they are extremely good at is infiltrating other countries. And one thing that our Pentagon and our actual own officers said is that they have now surpassed us in AI and in AI autonomous drones. That is scary considering they've just launched uh, one of their first autonomous drone carriers. And uh, not only that, the three carriers, everything's been moved up on timelines. Everything that was down the, down the road, 2027, 20, 28, is now getting finished now. 
Those nukes were just a huge example. Uh, when they said, oh, they might they might have, you know, 300 by the end of this year, that changed in six months. Now they say, oh, they'll have 1,500 by that same time. So going on that estimate, in another six months, are they going to say, oh, well, actually, it's going to be like more than like 4,000 or 5,000. Then you're getting up into the territory of having as many nukes as the U.S. or Vlad. So something is happening here, and it's pretty hard to deny. If you do, that's your opinion, and I totally value that. Just share it, uh, share it politely. Uh, thank you, everybody. By the way, a lot of great people in the chat. Thank you, uh, Red Scout, Jammer One, Doctor Science, Mandates for Humanity, Manatees for Humanity. That's awesome. Android Architect, Priscilla R. If you remember, you have less than three weeks. Twisted Luck Truth. Hey, the, nice to see you. Truth Iris, One Sun Observer, Guacaholic. Thank you for stopping in. Lots of craziness. As far as uh, it says, since at least 2006, the government affiliated academic community in China began investing air, investing aerospace engineering aspects associated with space based kinetic weapons, generally a class of weapon used to attack ground, sea or air targets from orbit. Firing weapons from space is technologically difficult because of the challenges and distance from atmospheric reentry. Research on such arms includes studies on methods of reentry, separation of payload, delivery vehicles, and transfer orbits for targeting purposes. The research appears to be behind the unprecedented July 2021 20, test of China's first fractional orbital bombardment system, which is one of the scariest systems in the world. North Korea also uh, holds one of those uh, and other countries. FOBs, which is a fractional orbital bombardment system, is one of the systems in the delivery systems that is quite the scariest because it is one that is extremely hard for the U.S. in specific to defend against. It would go around the world and then it would come back in uh, and it would be in an area where it would be hard to defend from. The test involved the launch of an ICBM with a hypersonic glide vehicle from China that traveled around 24,800 miles and was in space for over 100 minutes. The report called that the FOBs test was the lo longest of any Chinese land attack weapon system to date. Remember, the FOBs is what carries the EMP, uh, or it could carry whatever. It could compare it. It could, it could uh, carry a nuke. It could carry anything. But the FOBs would be the best way to deliver an EMP to knock out our entire grid. It says a report called the FOBs test the longest of any land attack weapon system to date. The Soviet Union researched a FOB strike weapon in the 1980s, but the United States has no similar strategic weapon system, which is kind of crazy considering Russia has it. Russia gave it to NK, which they said that they gave them the design for the super EMP weapon. And China has it, but yet we don't have a system like it. I doubt that. I would think that we would secretly have something like it, but maybe it just won't work in the way that uh, that it goes around the Earth and then comes and hits them. I don't know. The new U.S. Space Force is said to be developing counter space weapons. However, all of the force's work on space warfare, tool, uh, warfare tools is classified. Michael J. Listner, a space expert with space law and policy solutions, said that the Pentagon report highlights the PLA's space weapons use in a conflict but fails to consider the same space warfare, warfare tools could be used preemptively to cripple the U.S. military prior to a larger offensive. Crippling the U.S. space assets would be a logical move on the part of the PLA, given their view of deterrence is preemptive in nature and designed to escalate a situation to the point of dissuading an adversary from further escalating the scope of a conflict. I, I think back, and I hate to mention it again, but the movie Dragon Day, man, that movie definitely uh, stuck with me as bad as it was budget-wise and quality and, you know, acting. That movie, the plot line and and not not the not the uh, not the script of like the interactions, but the actual plot bases, that was what really was freaky in that one. China's military has developed an anti-satellite ASAP missile system that can hit at all satellites passing in low Earth orbit, around 1,200 miles or lower in space. PLA war games regularly use the ground launch missiles in training exercises to simulate simulate knocking out hostile satellites. 
It says the Chinese military is also working on new ASAP missiles that can attack strategic satellites in geosynchronous orbit, or 22,236 miles in space. Most military and intelligence satellites are deployed at this height. So they're specifically practicing to knock out uh, military and intelligence satellites, or at least practicing for it. And it says that their destructive ASAP missile test against a Chinese weather satellite in 2007, that test generated more than 3,000 pieces of dangerous debris. A total of 2,700 pieces remain and will continue orbiting for decades, the report said. That's why they freaked out about the, the Russian uh, mission that they did where they shot down their own satellite as well. That put uh, a bunch of pieces and they say that it could cause a huge uh, domino effect. Makes me go back to the movie, what was that, Gravity? Dex, do you remember the movie that where it showed that with uh, George Clooney and... Uh, yeah, it was Gravity. Gravity. It was a movie where it showed Sandra that... Sandra Bullock. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. That's right. And they show Sandra Bullock and George Clooney in space, and they're on the space station, and something happens, and a little piece hits it, then it breaks up, and then it keeps going around, and all of those other little pieces go all the way around the Earth and cause this kind of uh, domino effect. I wondered if that was put out there to, you know, predictive programming or, or kind of put it in our heads that that was something that could happen so we could visualize it because, um, well, I just think about how Hollywood is involved in so much ganda. You guys know what I mean. And then China Xi to visit Saudi Arabia, sources say amid frayed ties with the U.S. Uh, Dex, do you want to comment on this? Well, certainly we're not in a great position right now with SA. So uh, here comes Xi to swoop in and make a great deal. And I, you know, got to applaud him from a strategic point of view. It's the right thing for him to be doing, given the fact that we are in this predicament right now with SA. So um, obviously we don't want that to happen. They've been a longtime ally. Um, I don't know that they're necessarily going to completely flip, but it's certainly a, a bad sign when you see this type of activity happening, and especially when you look at how uh, our current administration has not done a great job managing that relationship. As a matter of fact, they've let it go pretty badly uh, in the in the past year, specifically. So um, it, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. It could just be a meet and greet and a, you know chit chat about a few things, or maybe they'll come out and say they're going to you know, do some new initiatives together. Obviously, they both uh, deal with a lot of oil, uh, SA being one of the largest producers and and uh, uh, potential, uh, you know, deals that could happen there. I think what we want to pay attention to is if anything happens with um, the exchange of oil for currency that's not U.S. dollars, if they agree to to do exchanges with uh, the yuan or with uh, other types of currency, then that would be a very, very big event um, against the uh, petrodollar and against the U.S. Which any country that has gone against the U.S. petrodollar, um, well, it, it, let's just say it hasn't ended well for the leaders of those countries. Good <clears throat> Oh, man. on the thing. 50 others. <clears throat> Sorry, I had something in my throat. Red Build says, Heard a good saying that you could use, Marf, the difference between a conspiracy theory and the truth is about five months or five years. I actually have heard that, and people change it around to six, six minutes to six hours uh, to six minutes to six months. Um, and yeah, it's now the truth another one that was uh yeah truth is the new hate speech yeah that's that's another one that was i think clown world put that on a t-shirt um and then open uh by the way thank you for your support i hope you meant to do that thank you so much red pilled i appreciate that and uh again thank you for the 50 dollar super chat i appreciate it and then Open Truth Ministry says, I'll grab a four-week supply, which will last me six months because my wife and I are hobbits. That is hilarious. And I, by the way, when I read it off camera, it actually made me laugh. I imagined you with little hairy feet. But thank you, Open Truth Ministry. And again, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, why doesn't Elon let loose a billion and fortify the grid? He would benefit from surviving also, I think. 
Stephen McMahon, well, because he has a ticket to Mars. Uh, he is going to, him and his guards are going to be holding people back and they're going to be boarding their flood-proof uh, rocket and they'll be off to their new home, which it, there's all uh, all sorts of stuff at the very end of the show about that. It is really wild. Stephen McMahon, I hope, I know you'll stick around, but I hope other uh, other people do too. This thumbnail is uh, just such a weird tweet. I've shown you his previous tweets. I've shown you uh, the Dogecoin one that actually looks like an asteroid hitting Earth and a cloud uh, in, enveloping the world. Um, I have shown you where he actually tweeted a meme of, you know, it, it basically said, paraphrasing here, it said, the entire world worried about the economy. And it shows the Earth and it shows a guy on the moon looking at Earth and an asteroid going through it, almost like an arrow through a heart. Only the asteroid goes through and destroys Earth. And that was that exact meme. And that tweet of Elon's was actually used in the first 10 seconds of Don't Look Up. And Don't Look Up, whole other story. If you've watched that, you go, ha ha, funny science fiction. Some of us do believe in predictive programming. And some of us believe like they kind of tell us stuff like right out in the open sometimes. And it's my belief that there was some weird truth in there because... They made that movie, and the gentleman who made that movie actually has won award after award after award, and his specialty is making based on real event movies. And that movie, when they actually put Don't Look Up out, and the big thing, and all the trailers said, based on real events, and then it said dot, 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 that haven't happened yet. And you think about everything that's going on. You think about in that movie where they, if you haven't seen it, make sure to not only watch it, but watch it past the credits. There's an end scene past that a lot of people missed. It, where the elites fly off to a Goldilocks planet while the world gets destroyed. And it is a freaky movie because it has this kind of undertone of, it's comedy and it's you know funny and it's satirical, but it has this undertone of realism to it. It also makes the woman president kind of a, uh, I guess, uh, I, not a synonym, like a, basically a, a woman version of, of Trump. And it's just so weird. That whole movie uh, actually kind of re reflects a time that we had just a few years ago. And the, the characters in it are kind of like a Kanye and Kim. They have all these people that kind of represent real people, but they've kind of changed their names you know, to protect their identities or something. And what's weird is that the whole thing with that and everything that, uh, with don't look up, people have been finding more and more and more things that actually happened that line up with that movie. So I just think it's really weird considering the, they have the Facebook guy and the, the social media guy. And then you of course have the Elon character. You have all, all of them kind of combined in that movie. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. It is just wild. And then Putin drives on repaired Crimea bridge as publicity stunt, or at least that's what they say. Uh, Dex, do, would, you, would you cover this one real quick? Absolutely. So yeah, he literally got in the driver's seat of a Mercedes. Uh, this is the bridge that everybody should remember that was um, had a mysterious explosion. Um, obviously from uh, someone uh, against uh, them. And this is a significant bridge that uh, had a lot of traffic going into Crimea. So um, he they since repaired that span that got uh, blown up. But he, as a publicity stunt, got in the car and made the trip, a 12-mile stretch across the uh, bridge and uh, was in there, I think it was his deputy prime minister uh, in the passenger seat and speaking with him. And made the trip, drove across, got out, had a bunch of photo ops, uh, walked around, shook hands, did all that. Um, so, you know, on one hand, I think what he's trying to do is show uh, strength to uh, his people and show that, hey, you know, just because they took this bridge out or, or tried to take it out, you know, it's safe or it's good enough for me. I'm coming out to show you that, you know, I'm willing to drive on it, not just from a structural standpoint, but from a, you know, combative standpoint that, you know, there's he's obviously there is a threat towards him but he was able to drive on this massive bridge in the middle of the day and nothing happened to him 
Uh, so yeah, that was kind of a, a, a bold move on his part. Uh, you know, obviously a little bit kitschy from a PR perspective, but at the same time, it's also, I think, you know, again, reaffirming for his people and for, uh, his citizens that, uh, you know, he means business and that they're in good hands. At least that's what he wants them to think. I don't know. Something about this kind of reminds me of like, you know, six, nine walking around, uh, gang neighborhoods in New York. You can tell it's like four 30 in the morning and nobody's awake. He probably jumped out and was like, yeah, yeah, we on the bridge and then got back in before everybody woke up. I don't know. But again, photo op. And before we move on, thank you, everybody that is still with us. We have a lot to go. We are going to be talking about, of course, uh, Elon tweet, Russia fires more missiles, Kev hit. Uh, before we do, I do want to remind you, if you want to protect yourself against an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, or a CME, this also protects against uh, the natural kind, a Carrington-level event, you can do so at marfuglenews.com slash EMP. It's a 100% American-made product, it's a veteran-owned business, and it's one of the best companies we've ever worked with. Anybody that is here and that already has one of these is, have dealt with their company, they are very much like a small family company that has grown uh, now extremely fast since since their uh, the executive order was signed uh, to where now agencies like DOA, uh, DOD, DHS, and others have actually picked up EMP shields, and now they have uh, EMP shield in a uh, industrial form. Now they're working with the government to help protect the grid. Now, as far as that executive order that T-Man signed, uh, parts of it were undone when this new president was put into place. The, a lot of it is still going, but it has been slowed down. We are vulnerable, and it is one of the things where it kind of made everybody scratch their head because the, the executive order that was priorly signed had bipartisan total support. Everybody was like, yeah, protect the grid. So why they undid parts of it, I don't know. Kind of makes you think, might makes you wonder. But if you want to protect your own stuff, if you want to protect your own car and your own truck and your generators and even your house, you can do so. They even make versions for your ham radios. They're making new versions all the time. And basically what they do is they ground the signal but, uh, from either a CME or an EMP in less than 500 trillionths of a second before it's able to fry your device. Uh, again, the car version is the most popular. If you want to put this in your car or truck, if it's at risk, uh, then it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Anybody can do it. You don't have to know uh, anything about cars to do it. It's very, very simple. The house version, you do have to get an electrician in, but once you do, uh, within 250 linear feet, so almost you know most houses from where it's wired in, it will protect everything that's plugged into the walls. So pretty amazing system. Make sure to go check it out. And if you go through us, not only do you get $50 off, but you are also supporting independent media at the same time. You get a discount. You are helping our channel and us keep uh, stay around because we don't have backup. Uh, but you are also protecting yourself marfuglenews.com slash EMP. All right, and then uh, Dex, let's go over Putin approves Russia budget for three years. Third part goes to war. Well, we always talk about how much they've spent in their GDP, and then what we're seeing here is he's approved a three-year plan uh, specifically with a tremendous uh, expense towards um, uh not only law enforcement officers, but also the conflict in UKR. So um, those were two significant portions of this plan. Um, some, uh, I guess the expenses will conclude over 9 trillion uh, rubles, which is approximately 145 uh, billion uh, US uh, throughout 2023, or 32% of their entire budget is going to be put towards this uh, increase for the UKR conflict and for its own law enforcement uh, officers, which I think would uh, probably may, may be able to be used in multiple ways, I guess, but they're obviously expecting something, uh, a, a need for that. And I think maybe that goes hand in hand with the conscripts and other stuff. We'll see what ends up happening. It says that he has signed the law on the federal budget of Russia for 2023 in a planned period of 2024 and 2025. 
It includes increased expenses for law enforcement officers and the conflict in UK. UK. Thus, expenses conclude 9 trillion rubles. And then explosions rock two Russian air bases far from UKR front line. So they are striking inside of Russia. Um, as far as how far, it's pretty far. Explosions have rocked two Russian air bases far from the front lines of Kiev appeared to launch a preemptive strike on bombers that the Kremlin has used to try to cripple the UKR electrical grid. The Russian Defense Ministry confirmed the attacks on Monday, claiming two of its warplanes had been damaged when it had intercepted two UKR drones. Uh, for Kiev, the strike represented an unprecedented operation deep inside Russia to disrupt the Kremlin strategy of provoking a humanitarian catastrophe in UKR on the verge of winter. So so they are at, at war um, as far as uh, some have actually done a response to this and said, essentially, in a conflict like this, they have tried to stay to, in their opinion, have tried to stay to the electric uh, grid and to critical infrastructure, which in pretty much every conflict are fair game. Um, some have uh, even said that, you know, they're lucky that they haven't gone beyond that and just flattened whole cities of civilians. World War II was really bad. Uh, World War II, civilian deaths outweighed uh, military deaths by far. It was pretty insane. So it says Russian media reports and video posted to social media indicated that an explosion occurred early on Monday morning in the Ingalls 2 air base in Russia's Saratov region, which hosts Tu-95 bombers that have taken part of cruise missile strikes against UKR. And then, uh, of course, that other explosion that we talked about in the very beginning, that was the other it says two explosion a Russian military base, including the Divili base near Ryazan, 150 miles from Moscow. Mean the war in UKR has come right to Vladimir's uh, front doorstep. That's what that, that's what they said about that. So now and Dex, so we're the the UKR side is now in there, and potentially U.S. weapons, U.S. Uh, forces that are training them could potentially be hidden in, in these uh, forces that are striking them. Uh, we we know that... Yeah, the, is this the first time a U.S. weapon... You know, we don't know, but could this be the first time a U.S. weapon has actually struck inside the mainland of uh, of uh, Vlad's country? Yeah, because... Via proxy? Couldn't they... Were they not able to do this beforehand to actually get into their borders before we gave them ex, uh, extra gear? So wouldn't they say that it that we're responsible for this because it's our gear, right? Yeah, I guess that's what we'll, what we'll have to find out is what was the actual uh, ordinances that were used, and if that comes out, it'll be very it'll be extremely telling if it's uh, something that was from the West versus uh, something um, that they had, you know, some old Soviet stuff or their even their own drones that they're making. That that could be a totally you know plausible. Uh, explanation, but it it would also not be shocking to hear that they're leveraging some technology they got from the West. I I missed that comment. I was gonna um, somebody had a really good comment there, and it's too late. I can't go back. Cheryl Aikens, Truth Iris, Karen from Columbus. Uh, by the way, anybody in uh, current or retired military here? Yeah. I would like to ask you guys a question. Is there anybody that is current or retired military in the chat right now? I have a, a question for you, and that would be, do you think that the timeline has moved up uh, significantly in the last year as far as a potential World War III? We polled you guys about a year ago, and most people said within two to three years. Uh, a lot of people said two to three months. Now, it, again, it looks like it is it is sped up, that the timeline has moved forward. T-Man Red Pill said classified. Sorry, Marv. Uh, Williams, Bobby Sue, Shane Durden says absolutely. NATO, Russia tried to take over Estonia four years back, and because they paid their dues, they didn't get anywhere. My retired Marine husband says yes, Mirror 504. Darren Trader, ex-military, 86 to 89. 
Hey, thank you for your service, Darren. Ian DeBo, Ian DeBo, sorry. <laughs> thank you for your service. I didn't know that, Ian. And then uh, Frank Bush, Western Rebel, yep. Tazini Gola, yep. Vigor, look at how many awesome vets we have here. I mean, that's really, that's awesome. Brian McCann, no comment. He's an agent. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Mr. Floyd, ex-U.S. Army, salute. Thank you, guys. Thank you, all. Thank you, everybody. This is why. I think this is why we've been ahead of things is because of you guys. So thank you. Uh, disposed Mo. Mo dispo, disposed m Mo? Moy? Everything seems to be accelerating. Yes. Was that Stephen McMahon? I believe it was. Uh, thank you, Pam B. Love you, Marfin Dax and Mods. Is that what he said? Let's see. Uh, who was that? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it looks like... Uh, yeah, Stephen McMahon. Everything seems to be accelerating. Our rulers are insane. I agree with that. Most definitely agree with that. And then Russia fires more missile claims Kev hit its air bases. Moscow unleashed another massive missile barrage in UKR on Monday, striking homes and buildings and taking the lives of civilians, according to this. Hours after the government claimed UKR drones struck two air bases deep. So this was their response. The unprecedented attack in Vlad's country threatened a major escalation of the nine-month conflict because it had hit an airfield housing bombers capable of carrying nuclear weapons, which is kind of funky. Uh, by the way, I'm not an expert on nuclear weapons, but if you blew up something that contained one, would it blow up just like if it, as if it drops? Or are they no. set up to where it has to be triggered by when it hits? The, the no. reaction wouldn't be the same, right? No, it's not the same. No, not at all. There's a, a, a very intricate system that is required to make that happen, and blowing it up might might cause it to leak. It might cause some of the radioactive material to <clears throat> to be exposed, but it's not the same as actually it blowing up. We used to have a fantastic Fam member um, that she made the switches for the, she was made in the, she worked in the factory that made the, whatever the triggers were, the, the little thing that basically they manufactured the part where the missile, where it, it hit the tip and it would trigger something else. And she made those little triggers and it was a, it was a big, a very important piece of the missile um, one thing that she said before, you know, she's been gone for a while now, but one thing that she said was that that had picked up and that was like four years ago that she said it was just insane how fast they were producing them uh, and they were very specific purposes. Uh, Russia has been launching almost weekly bombardments of UKR in retaliation for another bold attack, the October 8th truck bombing of a vital bridge linking its mainland to the uh, peninsula. Which, again, that's the one where they were all walking on. And then Edward Snowden swears allegiance to Russia and receives passport, lawyer says. Uh, now, there's always been a debate whether Edward Snowden is a traitor or a hero. I think that debate's going to continue. Because there's people that do still take both sides because they don't like the U.S. gov and all of the stuff that we've done. But how do you possibly take Vlad's side on on anything either? Uh, and Edward Snowden, of course, did Edward Snowden ever get asylum anywhere else, or was it just um, was it just Russia? Didn't somewhere else protect him? I I always get the events because the same time he was getting asylum, you had um, uh, WikiLeaks Assange. You know, the same time they had kind of similar, you know, things going on and s similar. Uh, uh, yeah, Assange was Ecuador, and and uh, obviously uh, Snowden was was Vlad's country. Yeah, and the the information that Snowden came out with, just in case we do have any younger people under twenty four, uh, which is crazy to think about how many years it's been. It was like two thousand twelve, two thousand ten to two thousand twelve, I think, is when all this went down. In fact, it might actually say here later on here. 
when he came out with all of this information, essentially he took out information that proved that not only the U.S. government was spying on us and spying on its own people, it was spying on people such as, you know, the French president, uh, not only spying on them, but a- a- able to access their cell phones, access the cameras on their computers. The reason why you might see now, uh, you know, computers with little things where you can flip something over the camera, uh, those all or the things in Target that they sell with uh, little camera covers. The reason those are sold is because of his his uh, leak. The the leaked information. Uh, ended up having the U.S. in the crosshairs of the world. The world said it was a crime against humanity, how bad they they were surveilling everybody. Uh, Not only does our government listen to us, track us, trace us, do all the things that China does, uh, but it it was doing it secretly. And it was also tracking other officials, other uh, leaders of the world, everything else. And if they could do that, you know, back in 2012, imagine what they're doing now. Uh, around that same time, back then, they actually, uh, I think it was uh, Obama that undid uh, one of the rules that we had, which was that we couldn't serve up propaganda to our own people. That was actually uh, taken back, and now they can do it as much as they want, I guess. It says a, na- a former national security agent, agent uh, Edward Snowden, contractor who leaked information about U.S. surveillance programs, swore an oath of allegiance to Russia and has collected his Russian passport, his lawyer told state media on Friday. Edward received a Russian passport yesterday and took the oath in accordance with the law. So he's officially a Russian. What do you guys think about that? It's kind of a complicated scenario here. Uh, Some of you, especially our vets, probably say, no, it's not. What do you guys think? Is he a traitor, a hero, or is is it a complicated mix of both? Um, are you glad that he shared the information, but not glad he's he's uh, with Vlad? Very confusing times. All right, now let's talk about this. So this is absolutely nuts. <laughs> so I know that many of you probably debate me on this. And first of all, so Dex, can I uh, first talk about how we believed that Elon might be watching Jacob? Not watching us, but watching Jacob. And Jacob, by the way, doesn't brag that that Elon watches him or anything. Jacob is our our good friend. But Jacob did several things. And Dex, you were with me and me and you were texting back and forth as Jacob was texting. He's like, look at what he just did. After videos that he did using very specific symbols, things that the whole world wasn't talking about, not like, um, you know, news stories that everybody's chatting about at the water cooler. He used very specific theories that were his own, and those started popping up in Elon's Twitter. Weird things like when he talked about, you know, the smell of burnt hair or something, and then Elon Musk would just put burnt hair. Um, And then he did several other things. Dex, you were, you and me were kind of flabbergasted when Jacob was kind of live finding that Elon had posted this. Uh, picture that was not only in order of the way he did it on his show of T-Man, uh, Kanye, and uh, who else? Um, it was, uh, was it, it wasn't AJ, it was Elon, Kanye, and somebody else. And it had a very specific symbol. I can't remember what that symbol was called. Dex, do you remember? It, it, well, it was T-Man. Um, what was the third person? Yes, T-Man, Elon, and Kanye. And... Uh, he had just done a show on all three of them, used the same pictures, uh, and used this very old symbol that looks like, uh, well, in what Elon Musk did with the symbol is he posted a Three Musketeers picture, but the Three Musketeers were Kanye, T-Man, and, and uh, Elon uh, crossing their swords. And that symbol ended up making this thing. And he posted it in his time to where it was 11 11 on on uh in jacob's time now I say oh that's just a coincidence well 11 11 was also in the title it was like four or five things that combined and this isn't the first time so say you can still argue that oh he doesn't watch this stuff first of all if you guys understand there's uh this is kind of a group of people you guys and myself 
that we do, we're kind of on this, this thing where we believe the end of the world is nigh, right? At least I do. And I know several of you believe we're kind of in end times, right? Well, Elon is one of those people. And I don't think that myself or Jacob, we're small channels, but we're small, very uh, distinct and targeted channels to the kind of our audience. We have uh, the people that agree with us in this very tiny niche. And it's a subset of a subset of a subset of like, you know, we're prepping news, events, and end times, you know, prophetic things that are going on, right? There's not that many people when you start going down and down and down. And uh, Jacob is one of them. If you go look at his videos where he has actually put together all of the weird things that have popped up on Elon, after he posted one hour, the second, Jacob's saying, whoa, look at this. He tweeted with all of these symbols that were in my video, all of this, and he's doing it live. And then he did another one. And we're watching this in live time. Time stamped at 11.11. After Jacob, a minute after Jacob ended up tweeting it, Elon deletes it. Like the second Jacob uh, retweeted and said, oh my gosh, look at this. He did this because of this and this. Then he deleted it. Which, by the way, then somebody, oh, well, now it's gone, so we don't know. They archive all of these tweets and put a tweet. Dex, I think you didn't believe, or you, well, you didn't disbelieve it, but you were like, eh, I don't see it. So you went and found it, right? Yeah, I went and searched for the tweet and found it on Polita tweet or whatever the website. There's a few of them out there that archive all the, the deleted tweets of Elon or any other celebrity. So, and then there's been several times where I'm like, gosh, is this guy watching us? And you, are, you can say all day, no, he's not. It's just all this. He's posting this picture that talks about, you know, Elon, just on Thursday night, I specifically went th through kind of a rant talking about how Elon and these, why everybody is leaving space, sending DNA samples to the moon, uh, you know, talking about uh, China and how Elon is going to bring all of the elites to uh, the Mars and that this is like a Noah's Ark. And then he posts this. And this is a couple few days later, I actually mentioned Hot Musket. Hot Musket was a thing way back when T-Man was in. He ends up posting another tweet that says, I'm Elon, uh, Elon Musket. And then he says, or he says, Elon Musk. He says, I'm Elon Musket, Musket, or something. Musket, Elon Musket. And I'm like, why would he say that? Of course, other people could grab that musket part and say, oh, that's because of the um, the whole, uh, you know, civil conflict thing that he, the, the theme that he's been going on. But uh, in this picture, just alone, I'm not saying he's watching us, but I will say this. It was weird. Jacob texted me right away, right after I mentioned it. It was just kind of weird that he brought this up, posted this picture with another thing. It says Starship takes beings of Earth to Mars. And that's almost exactly how I put it. I said, I literally on that show, I said, Starship is going to take humans to Mars. I don't know. It's just, it's weird. So anyways, so then look at this picture. People have pointed out that there are men at the very bottom. And some have pointed out the color of their skin with weapons holding back a bunch of what other people have pointed out the color of their skin holding them back and basically saying like, get back, get back. And in the background, you can of course see a biblical flood. And I actually posted a picture. This is back in 1968 when this was painted. But if you look at this picture right now, it actually matches up pretty closely to one of the most advanced Chinese uh, carriers. Some were thinking it was a UFO, but it's actually, if you look in the background carefully, it's a military ship. So what this is saying, and then, by the way, it's all, because of the flood, it's up on these huge risers. This has been the subject of many movies. You know, this isn't the, the new idea, the, the Noah's Ark of space. But this is what Elon is doing. Uh, Dex, when you first saw this, it, it you couldn't even find it for a second. It looked like you, you it was weird. Something on Twitter was going wrong and it wouldn't even show you. What do you think about this? Oh yeah, the uh, the picture is kind of creepy. I mean, especially the fact that it looks like the starship. I mean, that steel-looking, you know, large starship uh, 
design that we will eventually see. Hopefully, I think in later in this month, they'll have some of the actual live launchers that go into space. Um, they've been doing the test firings, but that uh, that picture, you know, from the '60s, I think it was '68. Um, yeah, that just it's just kind of creepy feeling that it's so close to what what he actually has. And then look, this is the new, brand new Chinese Navy Type zero five five uh, cruiser ballistic missile, right? It even has it, and uh, again, ships are shaped like this. They've got the anchor hole right here. But even with the gray stripe, I guess maybe that maybe that uh, and you guys can tell me all, all ships look like this, okay? And maybe they're painted red because it flows through the water better, and all of them look like this. I just thought it was really weird that it looked. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think it's representative. It doesn't look like a cruise ship. Maybe it's a cruise ship, but you can see the red down here. You can see the same kind of angle, and then you can even see like the gray strip right here, and then. Somebody else posted, they said, uh, oh, yeah, it says sensitive. People were flagging this as sensitive, right? It's just the guys holding weapons, basically like stay back. And this is the vision people have of them going to Mars, all of the elites leaving and leaving us to fend for ourselves here on Earth before something happens, before the flood happens. Elon is an end of the worlder, by the way, which if you are somebody who believes the end is coming or end is coming, close or the end is possible then you don't have that much con uh you know content other than like documentaries or you know discovery channel stuff to watch on youtube there's not very few very you know live people that are talking and talking about these subjects so i just think i don't think it's too unbelievable that this guy might be watching our niche at least might have run into us somehow but yeah people are People were weird. And then if you go back and look back at her, his previous tweets, it's just weird. And this reminds everybody said it looks like, you know, don't look up in, you know, 1968. And what's even crazier is they are uh, loading up DNA from every species like a Noah's Ark and they're sending it to the moon. That's what's happening right now. Uh, multiple countries are coming together and working together to gather every species of plant, uh, animal, human, and they're all putting the DNA to samples not only to go to the moon, but to also get buried into the deepest mountains. Uh, there's the seed banks. I want to say it's Sweden. Could be Norway. Norwegian? I think it was Norway. Uh, but there, there's seed banks that are putting you know copies of all the plants, um, even extinct uh, animals are being, you know, sent up with this stuff. It's like, why? S seems to me like something's going on here. What do you guys think about this? Is this freaky or what? Let's go over to the chat real quick. The elites can go. The more, the better. I think it's a track, a trick just to get rid of them. LOL. Uh, Michael close. And oh, 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 he posted this at 1148 PM. My time. This was 3.48, or it was uh, 2.48 in the morning. This was at 3 in the morning, the dude posts this. Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, posts this. And it looks just like a B BFR, or a big friggin' rocket, right? It's just weird. What if this painting was predictive programming from 1968? What if the, the guy was a visionary? You know what style it reminds me of, too? And even this swoop right here, it reminds me of the mural artist from the Denver mural. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? With the swipe of the sword? Just odd. Nice art. The art. Elon's Ark. It looks old school. It is. It's actually from 1968. And it's the Japanese artist uh, Sh Shigeru Komatsuzaki that lived from 1915 to 2001. The Space Ark. Somebody responded, you're not Noah, dude. I said, I don't think it will be at all funny when you find out he might be. It's creepy. And then, yeah, look at that's a zoomed in picture of that. What does that look like? It even looks like they have something on the back of their heads. Neuralink, maybe? I don't know. I just thought that was too much of a quinketing. 1968, and that's a current. Uh, 
055 type cruiser. Even with the red flag at the top, red red something back there. Just odd. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, did you see that when he tweeted it? Did you think it was weird? Tell me if I'm crazy. I don't mind if you do. And uh, moving forward, this is something I really hope that people can save up for or get if they have the possibility to get one. Energy, if you don't know this brand, they make several different types of solar generators. This, I believe, will save lives at some point, it, it, even if it's not an SHTF, if it's just a local storm or a tornado or something else. Uh, having power when there is none is pretty amazing, especially when it's stored up, ready to go. No matter what's going on, you can plug something in and have it run. Uh, this is great, again, because it's solar, which means uh, it is. this version is run by lithium. It's a battery that stores all that power. You can have it ready to go at your fingertips. Uh, you can charge it via the wall. You can charge it via solar panels, which you can, of course, put outside every single day. You have uh, power coming in every time that the sun uh, goes up. So it's pretty awesome. You don't have to store gas. You don't have to buy gas for $5 a gallon. And uh, you don't have a, a lot of ton of running motors. In fact, uh, very little maintenance with any of the solar generators. And also, it is absolutely silent. All of these solar generators are quiet, which means you can go stealth mode. You can also put this inside your house. You don't have to worry about fumes or, uh, you know, nauseous gashes, you know, filling up the room with CO2. Uh, so make sure to go check this out. Energy makes some of the best products out there. The Kodi X2 is now uh, all of the ones that were shipping out in December have shipped out. If you want to be some of the lucky few in January, then you would want to get your order in now. Uh, that is for the Kodiak X2. There is a waiting list for the Flex 1500. That is the flagship system that I have that is modular. It works like Legos. Uh, essentially, it literally stacks. Uh, you'll see the batteries actually go on top of each other and uh, they plug into each other. And you can actually extend this up to 96 batteries. It is a system that you could basically go as big or as uh, small as you want. You can go portable to where you can throw it in your trunk or in your you know, front seat or in your back seat and uh, just leave. You can bug out with it or you can make a full setup to where you've got thousands and thousands of hours of power. So again, make sure to go check that out. Marfuglenews.com slash energy, I-N-E-R-G-Y. Use the code Marfugal on this one. This is one of the few that make sure to uh, remember that code because you can save up to $170 off on certain packages, uh, especially when you are trying to get the generator, uh, solar pa panels, lights, accessories. They make all sorts of low, uh, low power, low wattage things like low wattage ovens, low wattage lights, low wattage accessories that basically can run forever on this thing. So go check them out. Marfuglenews.com slash energy. You're helping independent media and you have a backup power supply. All right. And then uh, let's see here. So Dex, we have some pictures here. This is the B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber. Do you want to go over that? Yeah, so we, we talked about how this reveal was coming, uh, and I think it's Northrop uh, was putting this out. Um, and they're in the stages now of doing ground testing and getting ready for the first flight. Um, these are the first pictures. So we had all these artist renditions that we showed. Uh, now we have the actual pictures of the new uh, uh, new plane, the B-21 Raider Stealth. So uh, this is it. I believe... Um, some of the speculation is this can be autonomous as well as piloted, um, and it uses some cutting-edge new uh, stealth technology to make it even more undetectable. Um, I guess this will be really interesting to see if we can fly these around the world without anybody knowing. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're on the brink of uh, them actually flying, uh, at least publicly flying them. So right now they're doing ground tests, and these are, just came out, uh, just presented to the world uh, visually. I think in the past we've seen things like this under tarps and had suspicion, you know, was that the, you know, a future aircraft that's coming out? This was also many billions of dollars. I want to say they're like two to three billion a piece. It's a $200 billion program. I think they're going to deliver about a, a hundred of them. Um, it's 
pretty significant uh, advancement for our uh, bombing capability. I just wanted to show you, this reminded me of the scene from Independence Day where the, you have the alien ship where they first go up there and Will Smith is piloting the thing and flies right up to it and looks at the guy through the window or the alien through the window. And uh, I, I would think, I was, gosh, I'm like, this reminds me of something. Doesn't it kind of look like these ships from Independence Day? I'll show you this is the Independence Day, but it just looks like UFO. Like, look at that. And they even made it, like, white. I, I don't know if it's white. It could be uh, dark gray. could be light gray. But this looks wild. It looks like a manta ray or something. It looks like it has, you know, character. It looks like a spaceship. Look at the bottom, how it's shaped. It, I mean, it... I, I don't know what the, the... We don't have a top down of what it's actually shaped like, and maybe that's on purpose. But it looks like a, a flying saucer or something. Very, very odd. Thank you, by the way, uh, Rizar Badger1. Thank you guys for going back and forth and gifting out uh, Marfia badges to people. The Real Thick Shady, thank you for following. Uh, let's see here. Three Kid Mom, thank you so much. Beer Juice, Kimbria. And Vicky K, thank you for celebrating an anniversary. Uh, Marfia anniversary there. Thank you. And uh, several people that just popped in. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Um, thank you, everybody that has uh, supported tonight's show. I appreciate that. Looks like a couple new folks just uh, came in. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Matthew Kamaleski. I appreciate that support. Says they aren't going to get past the firmament. Matthew Kamaleski, thank you for the support. Uh, they are doing tests, and they, I thought it was funny. I pointed out the other day that th uh, preparing to go to the moon, they're going to send dummies up and see how they react to radiation. I'm like, but I thought you guys already went. Winton Dupree, look up when uh, worlds collide in 1951. I'm not that old. That movie stuck with me when I was a kid. When worlds collide. Okay, I will look that up. I'll look that up before we go. Humble Hashmaker, thank you, says, peace, love us. Or peace, heart us, I think. Thank you. Uh, Joseph Newhouse, something messing with NASA spacecraft, made fun video about lunar uh, occultation of Mars. Or occupation, I think. Kind of a follow-up to Jacob's video earlier. I will have to check. I haven't seen Jacob's uh, last two videos. Everything seems to be accelerating. Our rulers are insane. Stephen McMahon, thank you. Uh, Dex, uh, why don't we go over the web only? We've got lots of crazy stuff here. Yeah, we do. So head over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, or open up the description on YouTube or Rumble and click on that show notes link. It'll take you right here. You'll get all the news we just covered, uh, plus more. When you get to this yellow bar, it says overflow, you get to the rest of the story. So a uh, lot's happening here. Uh, one of these interesting headlines, but it's a little technical when it comes to the finances, the huge missing and growing $65 trillion in dollar debt is sparking concern. So if you want to know more about that, uh, you can go check it out. I'll give you a little bit of a warning. It's kind of, uh, it's a very financially technical, financially technical article, uh, but it is, um, it kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of things we've been talking about with the ec economics of the world and the economics of what's going on. Hey, Vlad is uh, still in the news. There's other stuff we've covered. One thing that was kind of a couple days old now, but um, and it's allegedly he you know fell down the stairs and soiled himself. I don't know if that's been true, but it's been reported. Uh, uh, that's pretty putting him in the category of some other folks who've had uh, it, potential alleged issues with that as well. So uh, we do have political updates going on. To, uh, final runoff i guess in georgia is happening uh today it's now tuesday uh on the east coast so uh we'll probably hear more about that uh elon in the news as well uh a lot of speculation on if twitter's going to collapse or not of course they still say you know there's all these bad things happening um and you know now they're going to say what's going to happen to tesla um and then uh somewhere out of nowhere saying he's not you know going to hurt himself uh so in case something does happen to him people will know so lots of updates with elon um apparently the uh cat dog cat is putting out recommendations again for uh, ways to help prevent some of the things that are going around 
Um, and it's that diaper that we're not uh, very fond of. I guess it's going to be making a comeback, or at least they're encouraging it. Um, that and more from them. So uh, along the lines of that, the military is still pushing for um, one of the things that they had uh, originally did that got a lot of service men and women out. Um, so that will continue, apparently, or at least they're saying they're going to push forward with that. Um, Harry has come out, uh, Prince, former uh, Prince Harry has come out uh, with his new um, expose, I guess. So all of that on Netflix, I guess the, there's a big tell all going to be revealed through that. So that's in the news. So I don't know that we're going to get any of the <clears throat> the very deep, dark secrets, but I'm sure he's going to tell his whiny baby um, <clears throat> how difficult it was to be rich and lavish. Over I only in, make uh, 50 million yeah. a year. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody yeah, else my, makes fifty. My too. grandma's the queen. <laughs> yeah, sorry. That's not good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, so we'll we'll see what he has to say. But that that's on the brink. Um, plenty more. Uh, matter of fact, there's a lot more going on. It's a crazy video of this coyote attacking a kid, and the uh, the um, dad steps in. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out. A lot of other updates going on. A lot of things we uh, we didn't get to, we couldn't cover. I haven't even told you the whole spectrum. So make sure you go over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, or open up that show notes link uh, right there in the description, so you can get the rest of the story. We put this together for you every night. Uh, it's you know, it's laborious, but it's we do it for you. We want to make sure we've got all the information that you. That, that you would want to find or uh, we think may be important or, or insightful and sometimes just funny and, and uh, uh, entertaining. And sad. Uh, Kirstie Alley has passed, if you didn't hear about that. That's, of course, the Look Who's Talking star. Everybody uses that one. She's been in better movies than that. But uh, Kirstie Alley was actually pretty outspoken. Uh, she was a conservative. She was ex- She was a feisty one. She had so many Twitter battles. I mean, uh, I would say the most memorable moments of her last 10 years was her on Twitter. I mean, she's battled with people all over the place. Um, She passed and she lost her battle to cancer. I just, I'm so, I hate cancer. I hate everything about it. I know there are so many of you that feel the same way. I love you guys and uh, thank you so much to the mods. Make sure to thank them. Oh, hi. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. Oh, get big. This is the kitten, by the way. If you guys remember, it was like that big. Hey, baby. Oh, your baby. How are you doing? Don't step on the keyboard. You want to make music on the beat maker? Well, thank your mods. Uh, Lisa, I don't know. Where, I, the chat's been flying by. Thank you, Leah. Thank you. All of the great mods. Haven't seen a few of them in a while. Everybody's got so much stuff going on in life. Uh, Make sure when you see a mod, thank a mod. I think that's like, see a mod, thank a mod. Yeah, that's that. just thank all of them. You know, other channels everywhere. Love you guys. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out. Dex, thank you so much. Appreciate you. Much love. Great job, brother. It is now time for this shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shoutout. It's a shoutro.
Jamie and the Murphy's Law on why I said well, I'm on the way back Lonely till I get there like the Maytag I'm Remember after the first five minutes it all heads over to Marfugal Jams Our third channel where the chat And basically it's just so you can hang out with the Fugal fam Thank you to our top supporters tonight Again, I believe that will be Red Pilled and Connie Lee I get there like the Maytag
a major I'm on the way back Lonely till I get there like the Maytag I'm on the way back Lonely till I get there like the Maytag